So now with the majority of the work done to the car body, we can go ahead and start filling in the windows. Um, I've given this plenty of time to dry up, set up, and get ready here. Um, as you can see, everything's pretty much sealed in place. It looks pretty good. Pretty happy with the results. Um, I'm going to be using Drydex spackling compound uh, to do this project. You can use uh, Squadron putty. There's a couple different styles of putty that you can use uh, to do model filling. I prefer the Drydex spackle because it's a pretty easy material to work with. It sands very easily. It's water-based too. Uh, it doesn't really shrink that much. Uh, it's very acceptable uh, to paint, stuff like that. Um, so I just prefer it overall. And this is what I'm going to be using to fill in most of the holes. As you can see, my container's a bit dried up at this point, but we can spike it. <clears throat> what I like to do is I take in a chisel blade basically like this, and I just determine how much I need. So I'll just basically take a small little bit out on a piece of paper like this, that's plenty. And then I'll essentially just start kind of spiking it with a little bit of water. So in this particular case, I'll just take a brush like this and just start mixing some water into the compound like this. Alright, so the putty's pretty well mixed together here. You can see it's a good solid consistency here and it's pretty much ready to go. There we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is basically use this material to fill in the gaps in the windows. For example, this one here, this one in the corner. I'll go ahead and demonstrate the easy ones first. Essentially what you do, you just take a little bit of putty and you'll just guide it over the seam and fill in all the cracks. I'm being sloppy at first, but as I get the putty guided into the spot, I'll just make a heavier pass over it like that and then kind of clean up the edge a little bit. And that's basically it. For the edges here, obviously, I want to be a little bit more precise. So I'll take a little bit of my putty off and then put it back on the knife just to keep it on the tip like this. And then I'll go around the edge of the piece that we just put in. And I'll start working it into all the corners like this. Up until now, we've been kind of sloppy with all of our work, but this is the part where you need to be pretty precise with this. Uh, you want to make sure everything looks good, everything's smooth, and you've got even transitions and everything. So it's important that you make sure you know you get as much of this filled on the first pass as you can. If it doesn't look right the first time around after sanding and stuff like that, you can always go back and add more putty. So keep that in mind. But for the most part, you want to try to be pretty accurate with this the first time around, just so that everything looks good. Make sure you keep it smooth, and then I'm just going to try to blend up seems here like this hard doing this when I'm in a confined space let me tell you it's kinda hard there we go kinda clean up the edge a little bit take a little bit more putty over to this window and start filling this one in as well alright so I have the model outdoors on my porch reason being I don't want to get all this spackled dust all over the floor I just swept uh, my room today uh, it's my only day off this week so trying to do some cleaning and stuff like that and take care of that so I don't really want to make a big mess so I have the car out here on my porch and I'm just gonna take and start kind of uh, just lightly sanding these parts and I'm using my fine sanding stick for squadron these are again great uh, great bits of uh... all right all right so I'm out here on my porch right now to uh, start sanding these parts down after we've gotten the final coat of uh, putty on these uh, just to make sure that we've got all of the cracks filled and there's no shrinkage. So I'm going to be using my fine squadron sanding stick to start. And the idea here, don't dig in all at once. Just use light pressure to very, very carefully sand the parts. And just really, really evenly smooth them out. Just like this. Just being very careful. I'm not trying to take all the putty down, I just want to get the majority of it and smooth it out. As you can see, getting a nice smooth transition there, which is good. It's exactly what we want. So it looks pretty good. I'll go back with an ultra fine sanding stick and a bit of a paper towel to just kind of go over this. Uh, this stuff is so easy to work with, I mean you can even smooth it down with your fingers if you wanted to. I'm going to hit the transition joints where we put the... Uh, filler pieces in. I'm just going to kind of clean these up a little bit with a very basic hand motion here. And again, it does not take much to remove that putty. And then onto the window section. Obviously with a part like this, we don't want to 
break it or anything like that so just be very very careful and take your time with a part like this just only take little bits off at a time only work in one section at a time and just go real slowly so here's the car body now uh, you can see we've gotten some little bits of primer painted on to the sides uh, really just some quick coats to kind of see where I'm at with certain things uh, as you can see from the shot here we have some more stuff to address uh, I wasn't quite sure because I was getting some halos uh, where I could see the putty through the primer so I decided to just go over the areas with some thick acrylic paint uh, black paint in this case just to kind of see exactly where I'm at with this for the most part this side looks pretty much uh, perfect I don't see any gaps nothing that we really need to um, do any kind of attention to I'll probably just go over this with a very fine light sanding just to finish off the area and have it prep for paint later on um, on the end here um, kind of going back and forth it looks like there's some spots I probably will need to fix on the end here but that looks pretty good and the side here um, this part looks pretty good this part will probably have to fill in a little bit more in the corner here um, and then I'll probably just go over it with one more final sanding with some uh, 400 grit sandpaper I'll just do a wet sanding over the entire area flatten it spray another coat of primer and that should call it good on this side as well again I gotta do a little bit more touch up on these uh, corners where we filled in these seams here it looks like there's a little bit of uh, a gap in some of these parts that I need to address other than that everything looks good you can see I filled in that spot on the roof where the old the uh, chimney used to be and it's completely blended in now um, while we're at it with the chimney I'll go ahead and install that uh, we're pretty much done with the worst of the work so it'll just be a quick part we can go ahead and install while I wait for some paint to dry in this case I have the chimney set aside here and if we look at reference for the chimney itself you guys can see how it's kind of positioned on the car it's just right behind the bay window um, right on this panel here this is where it needs to go so as you can see I have the chimney basically modified and it's cut at an angle here so that it'll fit the contour of the roof like this so it'll basically be mounted back here like that right here is where it'll be so I'm gonna go ahead and get that installed and come back as I'm just gonna basically glue that on here so now you can see the chimney is installed um, the next thing I'm gonna do is basically make a little antenna the C27A's have a small antenna that goes right above or right in front rather uh, of the bathroom vent here this little vent here and what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use a little 025 brass wide uh, brass rod excuse me I'm gonna basically use that I'm gonna take a little drop of super glue I'll show you guys how I install this so in a case like this where you go to install a small part, say a firecracker antenna, any kind of antenna or fine wire piece like that, you can take a little bit of glue, put it on the end of a piece of wire, and now you have a precision applicator for your glue. Give me a little drop there, and there we go. So I have a little piece, like I said, of this wire cut and filed to size, and now we'll go ahead and install it into the hole that we've put glue in. Like that. And you guys can kind of see that here. Just go ahead and position it here. Making sure it's perfectly straight. So now that's straight, looks pretty good. So now we'll go ahead and let that set up. In the meantime, let's go ahead and work on the V tie down section for the chimney, which is these little braces that are on the chimney here. These little pieces, this is common on chimneys, it has a little brace and we need to basically make that. So what we're gonna do to make that piece is use some brass wire. You could do this with styrene rod too, I've done that before as well, um, but brass wire of course is easier to work with. So what I'm going to use is some very fine brass wire and I'm basically going to just make a little V bend in the piece. Starting at the top, I'll just bend it down like this. See what this looks like on the 
car. Doesn't look too bad. Uh, yeah, there we go. That'll work. So now what I'm going to do is cut this to size and we'll install it. So I have the piece cut to size now. You can see looks pretty good. Got it bent. I'll take a little bit of my super glue and I'm only going to put a little bit at the ends for now. Just a little bit to start. And I'm just going to position it right in front of the chimney as best as I can here. Try to get it as straight as possible so that way it lines up. And then all we got to do now, if I can find my wire applicator that is, here it is. Take a little bit more glue. This, I'm going to put just a drop on the chimney, the styrene piece itself, and now we can just take our little piece of brass, push it back, and it should make contact with that glue. And then we can just kind of coax it into its final position with my X-Acto and tweezers. Alright, so I got all the putty pretty much sanded down now. You can see the final bits of touch-up are completed. We got everything nice and smooth. I went over this with 400 grit and then finished it with some 2000 grit uh, gator sandpaper. Uh, in certain areas where I needed to really get in the precise areas like around here, like in between these small little parts and stuff like that, especially in between this area, getting this window was a bit of a, quite a pain. It was a, I'm not going to lie, it was really a bitch, but uh, this sanding stick really came in handy for areas like this. The rest, like the straight up sides, areas like this, I went the 400 grit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and spray this off with one more coat of primer to seal everything in place and we'll double check our work so you guys will see in the next clip what it looks like. Alright, so I got the car on a box here in my basement. I'm going to go ahead and spray a couple coats of primer on this. I'll say one or two coats is, will probably do it. I'm using primer out of the can. I always use Rust Oleum Auto Primer. This stuff is absolutely amazing on models, uh, whether brass or plastic. It does a great job for work like this where you've done some kit bashing and need to hide seams where putty was used. Uh, this stuff works very, very well for it. Um, so I always use this for model kit bashes and such, and all my uh, car builds in general. So I'm going to go ahead and give this car a couple coats. I'm going to actually do a good solid coating on this now since this is pretty much ready for paint uh, and further detailing. So we'll go ahead and start working on this. Just light coats at a time. I don't try to uh, rush any of this. Like I said, light coats. 